So what's the history of tritonal? What's the meaning behind the name? So yeah, like loaded potato question right off the bat. Oh, right? Yeah. So we actually met on an online forum um, doing sound design stuff, became really good friends, and then ended up collabing and it turned into a partnership. And the meaning behind the name, like we searched for names, man, I want to say like two weeks, and a tritone is a, it's a chord, it's a, it's a diminished fifth in music, and tritone is an explosive, it's like a bomb, so we thought that like, you know, explosive musicality was a pretty cool thing, so we wrote one. Now, uh, I can tell from your voice that you're from Texas. Texas. You guys are from Austin. Yeah. Um, so how's the EDM scene down there versus you know, places. like bigger cities in New York, LA, San Francisco, I mean, honestly, Miami? Honestly, I mean, I think like it's, it's kind of up and down. I mean, but right now it's doing pretty well. I mean, there's Emo Z's, which brings in so many like killer class A artists. Yeah. And then there's a downtown club life too, like any other city. I mean, but yeah. like any other city, it's gonna have its you know ups and downs. But yeah, yeah. it's, it's I think, pretty. Good. I think dance music overall in the U.S. is is pretty solid. Yeah. And in Texas, there's a lot of cities in one state, big ones. You've got Houston, you've got Dallas, you've got San Antonio, El Paso, yeah. Austin. <laughs> so there's a lot of big markets, you know, in a, in a in a in one state. So it's good. It's a healthy state. Now you're, you're getting ready to start the Untouchable Tour with Cash Cash. Yeah, man. Um, you guys played around the world, so what city or state or even country goes the hardest? Oh man, that's such a hard question. <laughs> and I don't think it's like a city or a state. I think we looked at it like events uh -huh. that we get super hyped to play. You know what I mean? You know, going back to Texas, since we're from Texas and live in Texas, Houston is sometimes our rowdiest crowd. You know, we always love playing LA. Vancouver always comes out and rages hard. If you're talking internationally, you know, we love playing in Sydney. We've had amazing shows in Seoul, Korea, freaking Moscow, all over the place. So, I mean, when you say who rages the hardest, I don't know. I think it's about any particular night or any particular festival. You know what I mean? Makes sense. So, uh, what are the top five songs that you listen to on a daily basis? Oh, that's a good question. Only because, like, since we make dance music all the time, you think, like, oh, we're going to give you a slew of dance songs. Which we, in fact, we listen to a lot of dance, obviously. But, you know, when we do all this traveling and even at home, we're listening to a lot of chill out and experimental. Yeah. And some trap. And, you know, just kind of, we have a wide variety of people to listen to. I mean, yeah. I mean, between us, we have a good top five right now. Yeah, like, Neil's from. Yeah. He's got a new album called Solo. It's, like, super blown out, chill out piano music. John Hopkins Love has John a new Hopkins. record called Immunity. Um, if you don't know that one, you should check that out. We listen to Odessa. Um, man, you know, if you want to like hear some really cool stuff, chill out wise, that we're into, we're about to celebrate 100 episodes of Tritonia, our radio show, and we're doing that in Las Vegas, um, August 14th. And so for the 99th episode, we actually put together an hour of our favorite chill out tracks, or some of them right now in Deep House. And so that actually lands Monday. So uh, you can collaborate with anyone, dead or alive. Man, dead or alive. I'm gonna go with somebody alive. I'm gonna say Dave and I could probably agree that we would like to work with Chris from Coldplay as a vocalist. Um, and then get like another writer in there. You know, maybe like Hopkins or somebody like that that could lay down some, some wicked melodies. I don't know. You agree? I totally agree. <laughs> I mean, there's going to be other artists that are going to pop up between now and then, but you know, Chris is something we just talk about constantly. Yeah. He's such an amazing voice. So you've gained some support, uh, support from Armin, Hardwell, Tiesto. Who or what has been your main motivation or inspiration? I mean, Dave and I, like, you know, we came up with trans artists, and so I think that, like, if we're gonna, like, look at, like, an artist or a group that has probably influenced the most over time, it'd probably be above and beyond for me. Like, we don't make that kind of music anymore, but, like, as a band, you know, I respect so much what they do in songwriting. We don't really play, like, that super soft sound, but if I'm just listening to, to music, the musicality of it's amazing. 
I mean, <laughs> honestly, like, you can see why we're a good fit. Uh, Above and Beyond is amazing. Like, and, and not only that, they were kind of ahead with their, you know, how they're using the visuals and taking advantage of that. Now everyone's kind of following course. So it, that just defines a class act. And we feel like we're songwriters, and so, like, as songwriters, there are guys who are dance acts but who we consider amazing songwriters. They fit the bill. Yeah. So, uh, Untouchable is officially a hit. <laughs> Thanks. How was it to work with not one, but not two, but three other people? A lot of emails. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of emails from a lot of different people yeah. all the time. So, the idea happened really fast, like all good creative things. Yeah. The melody landed, we took it to LA, worked on the top line. The chorus landed in like literally like 20 minutes. He hummed it out and we were like, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and, awesome. and, but like nailing the record, like all the productions and the mix downs and the melody levels and the arrangement. I mean, I'm talking like three or four months back and forth and back and forth until we thought we were like, yeah. And even when we were like done done, literally like three weeks before the record came out, another chain of like, ah, oh, we want to just bring up the lead a little more and the bass. And I was just like, just it. stop, <laughs> you know? So thank God it's over, you know, and it's finally done. So, um, you know, when you're not touring, when you're not working on music, how do you relax? What do you do to relax? I mean, honestly, like, it kind of brings the tension down. It's working out, kind of yeah. helping your body, kind of, you know, get used to being a little bit more domesticated. Yeah. First off, getting proper sleep kind of helps us get in the way. Plus, we work hard. We get up every day. We work in my like, studio. Even yeah. during the weekends that we can, we take Sundays off just to yeah. kind of relax, spend time with the wives. And, I mean, honestly, like, this is our lifestyle. It's really yeah. dedicated. Yeah, like doing normal things is really the way, right? Eating good food, spending time with your friends and family, getting rest, because tour is such a grind. You know what I mean? It's, the play in the festivals is a lot of fun, but like our, we have to get up at 6.30 a.m. to drive an hour and a half back to Philly to catch an eight o'clock flight. You know what I mean? And so that part can get really tiresome. You know what I mean? Now speaking of festivals, play Electric Adventure. Yeah. You're going to be playing Chasing Summer and Sonic. Yeah. So what has been your most memorable festival experience? Man, oh, that's so hard, man. I don't know. I mean, I think one of the really good ones was when we played right after BT and right before Armin Van Buren at EDC in 2000. I think it was 12. Um, we had just released our Piercing the Quiet album. And I mean, it was just a magic night for us, right? Um, what do you think? I mean, there's a handful, really. I mean, there's so, sometimes it can be a blur, but you know, EDC is a big milestone for us. Yeah. We say that a lot. Yeah. We but played Ultra a few times. Pemberton, Pemberton was, cool. was great. Vancouver always has good yeah. ones. I don't know, man. But I think that one at EDC 2012 was a pretty good, a remarkable night. Yeah. So besides the tour, what are you currently working on that we can expect before the end of the year or within the next six yeah, months? Yeah, so we're trying to finish our artist album. Um, we've got a collaboration with the Chainsmokers um, that's going to come out in September. Um, we've been working really hard with those guys to finish that. Um, and yeah, we've got another club record that may hit, but 2016 is going to be all about our new album. Yep. So, two more questions. One, if you could sum up, uh, I guess, advice in one sentence for aspiring producers, what would it be? Do exactly that. Produce. I mean, not, the eyes of looking at DJs and being like, you know, I want to do that, it's kind of like out. I mean, you can do that. It's, it's pretty much the icing on the cake, but you got to build your foundation. And even when you're frustrated when you're writing, I mean, we get frustrated constantly. Yeah. And we, you know, take a break, we talk, we talk about it. Sometimes it's good to, you know, have an extra pair of ears around to give you some yeah. info. I mean, be open to criticism. Yeah. It is really important. Yeah. And the best way to get good at anything is to constantly do it. Yeah. So literally, there's no shortcut in like learning how to be an amazing producer. Like, you've got to spend the time to learn your craft. Lastly, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh man, one superpower. That changes every day, <laughs> doesn't it? If I had one superpower, what would it be? That is a tough one. I think, probably, oh man. <laughs> You're like, I think, you know, no. I, yeah, I don't know. 
I want to have a selfish one. I want to be like, I want to live forever. But I think the right thing to do is to like make people who fucking live now live better. So I'd probably, if I was really to have to choose, I'd feel like a dick if it was all about me. So I'd probably, I'd probably say have the ability to heal sick people because I mean there's so many people who are homeless, diseased, no water, like there's just a bunch of just problems on the earth. So what's the point of me living forever if everybody else is shitty, you know? So I'm gonna go with that. It's as selfless as possible. <laughs> well, thank Thanks, man.